<lacht> Wenn Wegen das... das. It's a fun, exciting, action-packed, occasionally rather sordid uh, roller coaster of a in work of insanity. Look, it's a very um, complex piece in many ways, but it's not a difficult um, film to take in, and it incorporates many, many different aspects of of human existence. So you, it's hard to sum it up in one little neat phrase. Tell them it's the most bodacious hunk of movie they ever did see. That their eyes will pop right out of their head. They won't believe what they're seeing. And yet they'll comprehend it some way through some magical effect, the power of the cinema. They'll see six stories that blaze across the screen in ways that they might not truly be able to put their finger on, but at the end of the day, they're going to be mesmerized. They're going to want to have to see it again in order to answer all the questions they have from that first viewing. How about that? Have you done that before? No, but it's how I feel. It's exactly how I feel about Cloud Atlas. It's amazing. Glaube, Liebe, Phänomene, die den Verlauf unseres Lebens bestimmen. Diese Kräfte nehmen ihren Anfang lange vor unserer Geburt und überdauern unseren Tod. It's exciting. I mean, I've never done a movie like this before, where I've been able to sort of have that kind of range and, and play like in that playground before. And to know that I'd be playing characters where I'd be completely rec you know, unrecognizable to cross genders and races, I was just, you know, it's like Christmas. It was brilliant. It was like diving into the dressing up box every day and transforming yourself and watching other people be transformed. Um, it was amazing. It was an incredible experience not to recognize your fellow actors some days because they were so completely um, disappeared underneath, underneath these other characters. It was brilliant. I didn't recognize Holly as a, as a Korean, old Korean guy in some Zombie story. Uh, she was sitting next to me and in the makeup trailer, but I... Hmm. Who was he? And who is he? Yeah. <laughs> it occurs to me, I did not get paid four times <laughs> my usual <laughs> salary. So, I she got paid didn't... four times less than normal. The directors didn't, didn't get anything. Because they got nothing. They got, no, nothing, they got so. nothing. They weren't even fed food on the set. Just put in a white room at lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> Told to think about what they'd done. Um, I always had you down for like the fluffy, huggable kind of kind of guy, and you really, you, and then and then one scene I was really I feel threatened by you. Good, Dermot yeah, Hoggins? Dermot Hawkins. He's a mean man. He's a violent guy, and yet his feelings are so hurt because he worked so hard on this book about his life. And then a, then a critic doesn't like it. So yeah, no, he only knows one thing, and that is the power of violence. I mean, just look at what he has tattooed on, on his fists. Um, you know, there's an element of that, I think, to every human being, particularly <laughs> the one who's speaking right now, that is usually controlled in a fashion so that it doesn't become so, so blatant and violent. Uh, but it, you know, and, and I, can't, and I can't deny it, it, it's, it certainly is fun in order to uh, explore that uh, to a degree, but I only got to do it for one day <laughs> and, then, it, and then it was gone. Was it fun that for once you could just grab a critic and... You know, it wasn't so much about grabbing the critic and doing a violent thing to it, but what it was fun was being able to verbalize the anger in a way. That's what was nice. It was fun in order to say, ladies and gentlemen, you know, that was taking over the room and pointing out that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that I have a different opinion than what that guy has. And I think we all fantasize about that. I'm not talking about critics, just anybody that makes you angry in life. We all, you know, fantasize about what would happen if I just could take this into my own hands and handle this the way, you know, of course we don't, but I think it's fun to play out that scenario. Und aus jedem Verbrechen und jeder guten Tat wird unsere Zukunft geboren. 
as a viewer, you don't get you don't get lost in in the character. You get you get you actually are forced to rem, you're rem, you're reminded that it's just an actor playing, and so um, you still follow the character's journey, but you're also you're also watching a film in a different way through a different paradigm. It's quite Brechtian, really. At Movie Pilot, we are always interested in favorite movies, movies that have influence influenced you so. Movie for the Lonely Island. You're going back, you know, how far do we go back for the movies as, that influenced as, us? Um, as far as you like. As far as you need to. You know, a movie that really knocked me out when I saw it, for the, because I felt it was it, it was playing with the narrative, was the Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Mm -hmm. When that came around, you know, movies up, movies about aliens up to that point had all been about, been very concrete and been very laid out. And here was this thing about people who had this idea in their head and they couldn't get it out and it ends up being... You know the black tower. You know that they all go to in order to see where the aliens are going to come through. I, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, I think, was one of the most important movies ever made. I'd take Magnolia, uh, well, for sure. Going to take long movies because mm. it's going to have a lot of time, yeah. right? I, yeah, I'd take Magnolia uh, and. Um, I take all the films that I watched as a child. Yeah, I think I would. I'd take Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. I'd take I Oliver Twist. Oliver. I'd take the Star Wars trilogy, the first, the, you know. Yeah, I'd take Star the Wars. Ones, not, not, the fan, not the Phantom Mary. No, 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 the original, the original, the original ones. ones. Well, I can't take those, can I? Because they don't exist on DVD. But if I could, that's what I'd take. Mm. I liked movies like, I'll just give you a, like a little laundry list. Things when I think about what impacted me. When I first saw Carmen Jones when I was very young, mm. that impacted me just to see people like myself. And that, that, that was yeah. new for me. Um, Dr. Zhivago, um, The Graduate, there, these things came across me at certain times in my life where their message was kind of poignant, um, Clockwork Orange, things that, you know, just it's touched all, me. Also that, has a different language. Different language and, and, and inspired me to think more deeply about things that I, you know, that I was, that was ruminating within me. Those are movies that I remember most, I think. Okay, then we have to come to the end then. On behalf of the Germans, I, I'd like to say excuse me, no, say apologize for <laughs> Vendas. It's all right. We're not offended. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's okay. We can handle it. We're still it. here. You were such troopers. We uh, we survived. I could have done without the kitty cat hat on my head. I could have done without the you know the musician of Bremen on my on my head. But uh, that's all right. You we wore survived. that kitty cat well. You bet I did, girl. Yeah.